In this type of hood, room air is directed first through a pre-filter to remove large contaminants suspended in the air. The air is then forced by a blower through a terminal HEPA filter covering the rear wall of the hood. Though a horizontal laminar airflow hood provides a controlled work environment, it does not protect either the handler or the outside environment from aerosols or particles generated during manipulations. For this reason, these hoods are used only when compounding sterile products that do not present a risk to the handler or the environment. During manipulations, care must be taken not to obstruct or disturb the laminar airflow. The work should be performed in the center of the hood and objects arranged along the sides. The same principles apply when cleaning a horizontal laminar airflow hood as when cleaning a vertical hood. Movements are made in the direction of the horizontal laminar airflow, that is, from the rear of the hood towards the front. Once a week, remove everything inside the hood and use a slightly moist gauze to clean the protective grill on the HEPA filter. Then proceed with the daily cleaning and disinfection, working in the following order. First, the sealing of the hood. Then, the first side, starting at the top. Next, the horizontal bar and hooks. And then, the second side. And finally, the work area. Note that laminar airflow hoods, whether horizontal or vertical, must be disinfected twice a day, that is, at the beginning of a work period and at the end of it. The hoods are cleaned with water, however, only once a day, just before disinfection. End by cleaning and disinfecting the supplies that will return inside the hood. The importance of hand washing in reducing the transmission of infectious diseases has been known for a long time. In this section, we describe the procedure for antiseptic washing of hands and forearms. Begin by removing the outer wrapping of a nail brush. Wet your hands and forearms with warm water to about five centimeters from your elbow, but without wetting the cuffs of your gown. Use the antiseptic soap dispenser and spread about five milliliters of soap on your hands and forearms. Carefully scrub the top of your nails, as well as underneath and around them, with the soapy nail brush. Now carefully wash your fingers, the base of your fingers and the spaces between them, the sides of your hand and the base of your thumb, the palm of your hand and the top of your hand, as well as your forearm, starting from the wrist up to your elbow. Wash the other hand and forearm in the same way. Make sure that you keep your hands higher than your elbows during the washing. Rinse thoroughly using abundant warm water, one hand at a time, starting with the fingers and moving up to the elbows. Let the water run down to your elbows. Keep your arms away from your body. Completely dry each hand under hot air or with paper towels, starting from the hand and moving towards the elbow without going back over the parts that have already been dried. Don't forget the spaces between your fingers. Use a different towel for each arm and discard it without contaminating yourself. Lower the cuffs of your gown and close the tap with a clean paper towel, taking care not to contaminate your hands. Discard the paper towel. At this point, you must not touch any part of your body or any contaminated objects. The next technique we will look at introduces the notion of critical sight. 
A critical site is any exposed surface that enters into direct or indirect contact with the sterile product. To ensure that critical sites remain sterile throughout the manipulations, do not obstruct the laminar airflow to the critical sites. In addition, avoid direct contact with these sites and make sure that non-sterile objects do not come in contact with them. Don't forget that the larger the site, the more porous its surface, and the longer the exposure to contaminants, the higher the risks of contamination. Here are the main critical sites. All parts of the needle, the tip of the syringe and the ribs of the plunger, the extremities of tubing, filters and spikes, access ports of sterile containers, the inside of protective caps, the neck and opening of an ampoule. Now let's look at how to remove protective wrappings and aseptically place supplies in the hood. First assemble the supplies and products required for the preparation. Without removing the protective wrapping, introduce into the hood any sterile items whose critical sites are not protected. Don't forget that the outside of the wrapping is not sterile. Do not, therefore, place it in the manipulation area. Next, introduce into the hood sterile items whose critical sites are protected, such as syringes and tubings. Here's how to do this. Open the wrapping in the first 15 centimeters of the hood and place the objects on either side of the manipulation area. Note that the wrapping must not touch the surfaces of the hood. Discard the wrapping in the waste bin outside the hood. Do not make any sudden or sweeping movements. Soak a clean gauze with alcohol. Near the opening of the hood, wipe all surfaces of objects that can be disinfected and that must go into the hood. Make sure not to contaminate the surface of the gauze used for disinfection with your fingers or the alcohol bottle. Place the disinfected supplies on either side of the aseptic manipulation zone beyond the 15 centimeter mark from the opening of the hood. Throughout this procedure, make sure not to contaminate sterile objects with non-sterile ones. Rub 3 to 5 milliliters of alcohol on your gloved hands and let it dry completely. Sit down at the hood to begin the manipulations. Reposition your supplies according to the order in which you will perform the work making sure not to disturb the laminar airflow. Here are some general recommendations before beginning aseptic manipulations which will help ensure that your preparations are sterile. Keep your nails short and clean. Don't wear nail polish. Don't wear makeup in the aseptic preparation area and related storage areas. Don't wear clothes that can generate particles or that were in contact with animals and always comply with facility policies and procedures. Don't forget that you may not eat, drink, chew gum, smoke, or store food or personal articles in areas where sterile products are prepared or stored. Now let's look at how to prepare for aseptic manipulation. First, remove any jewelry and tie back your hair. Remove your lab coat. Put on shoe covers when you enter the anteroom. Perform antiseptic washing. Put on a clean gown and pull the sleeves up above your elbows. Put on a cap and, if necessary, a beard cover. If you do not have to enter the aseptic preparation area, you must still put on shoe covers and perform aseptic washing when you enter the anteroom, but you do not have to put on the rest of the protective garments. In the anteroom, take out the supplies and products you need for the preparation and place them on a clean tray. Remove the outer wrappings from bag solutions. 
check the products, the expiry dates and the wrappings for any signs of contamination or alteration. Put on the mask if you have to work in a hood without a front panel. Remove the outer wrapping from a pair of powder-free sterile gloves. Perform an antiseptic hand and forearm wash, scrubbing your nails. Put on the gloves, placing them over the cuffs of your gown. Bring the tray close to the hood and add anything else needed to the tray. Do not introduce anything in the hood yet. Disinfect your gloves with alcohol. Place your supplies and the medications under the hood, checking them once again to make sure they are what you need and that they are perfectly intact. Place only required materials in the hood. Avoid as much as possible placing anything that is not sterile under the hood. Disinfect your gloves again. You are now ready to begin aseptic manipulations. Here are a few things to remember throughout the manipulations. Don't cough or speak in the direction of the products or the unwrapped sterile supplies. Keep conversation to a minimum and wear a surgical mask if the hood does not have a protective front panel. Don't forget that anyone who is infected or whose health may compromise the quality or the sterility of the prepared products should be exempted from these duties. In case of an accidental spill or splashing inside the hood, wipe the work area immediately with a clean gauze soaked in alcohol. Disinfect the work area between each sequence of manipulations, except when using a sterile liner, in which case, disinfect every time you change the liner. If you have to leave the hood to get items that are nearby, disinfect your gloves with alcohol before resuming the manipulations. If your gloves are torn, punctured, or very contaminated, remove them and perform an antiseptic wash before putting on another pair. If you have to leave the aseptic preparation area and the anteroom, remove and discard your gloves, mask, beard cover, and shoe covers. Your gown should also be removed, but it can be reused on the same day during subsequent work periods. Follow aseptic procedures to the letter and throw out any products that may be contaminated. In most cases, it is difficult, in fact impossible, to check the sterility of the finished product before it is administered. This is why all stages in the compounding of sterile products must be subject to quality control. Quality control consists in evaluating conformance of the finished product and the preparation procedures to establish quality standards and identifying any deviations. In addition to certification of the hoods, assessment of the finished product, and maintenance of the facilities and equipment, the quality control program should include the following. Suitable training for all personnel assigned to the compounding of sterile products. An objective evaluation of skills acquired following the initial training. Periodical certification of staff assigned to this service. The certification should include an objective evaluation of the mastery of aseptic technique at least once a year and a periodical procedure validation test. Systematic verification by a second person of pharmaceutical calculations, products used, volumes withdrawn and identification labels. Note that the finished product should also be visually inspected before it is released. Finally, an environmental monitoring program